The ties between villages in the East and the United States are as strong as ever. Regular reunions like this one at Horham in Suffolk bring busloads of US families over to reminisce. They're made even more special when among the crowds you find a veteran who was stationed here with the 95th Bomb Group during the war. 72 years ago I took off of this runway, headed for home with my crew and 10 others. Ray Hobbs is now 93, but he was just 21 when he flew B-17s from this runway. He's made the long journey from Utah to remember those days. I didn't know where East Anglia was at. Had a, didn't have a clue. It was really strange, and one of the fellows told me, well, you can want laundry, this lady up here, she does laundry. And so the time I was here, she did my laundry, and she did it very well, and I did naughty thing to did. I bought a dozen eggs from her and, and she says, don't say a word because I'm not supposed to sell an egg. <laughs> not one. For those who were children when the Americans arrived, the memories never fade. We had jam on turkey. Hmm. We thought it was. <laughs> it was cranberry sauce. <laughs> We'd never heard of that. Oh, the village was about probably 100 people, and all of a sudden 3,000. We didn't see any fear in the thought that there was a war going on. We just thoroughly enjoyed all the fun it brought with the Americans. It was from Grafton Underwood Airfield in Northamptonshire that the 8th US Army Air Force mounted its first heavy bombing raid over Nazi-occupied territory in August 1942. Over the next year, thousands of US airmen arrived, eventually being stationed at more than 70 sites across the region, bringing with them a new way of life for the locals living in the surrounding villages. Ray Hubbard was 10 years old when the B-17s and their crews flew into Thorpe Abbott's airfield in Norfolk. We used to play snakes and ladders and all like that. That was marvellous. They came and got us with lorries from the school and, and Christmas parties, Father Christmas. As I said, wonderful presents that we couldn't, our parents couldn't afford. Live and our lives up. The original control tower has been lovingly restored and the museum here keeps the memories of the 100th bomb group alive. At seven years old, Tony Mark was living just several hundred feet from the runway. Stood at the bedroom window with my mother and um, watching these B-17s, these damn great aircraft coming, zooming in. They had luxuries which we never had, some gum, sweets. There was music suddenly coming from the hangar. That was when Glenn Miller came and played there. Glenn Miller was no stranger to the region during World War II and it was from RAF Twinwood in Bedfordshire that he boarded the plane that mysteriously disappeared. More than 20,000 members of the 8th Air Force didn't return home. Didn't even feel and think of about any real danger, but uh, the danger was there all along. On the last mission of the, uh, the Chowhound mission, we lost the one from my squadron. Had 13 aboard that day. 11 of the 13 perished in that, uh, that uh, ditching in the, the channel. So it was a real, it was war. I never dreamt that I would ever see here again. It's wonderful to be back. Teams of volunteers at museums across the East are doing all they can to make sure this part of our region's history lives on.